The 2023 NFL Draft class is stacked with quality pass rushers, and with the Senior Bowl on the horizon, here are my top 10 edge rushers in the 2023 NFL Draft. And what's crack a It is your boy Bro Schmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, beautiful football discourse, especially with an edge class like this. I'm gonna leave a lot of quality players off the list and i want to hear about them in the comment section below but a quick special thanks to underdog fantasy for sponsoring the video if you like weekly fantasy or player prop bets check out underdog fantasy use promo code broshmo when you sign up and they'll hook you up to start your betting journey but remember my friends bet responsibly let's go ahead get into this sucker with number 10 keon white out of georgia tech He's 6'4", 286, almost 290, and he actually edges out Ohio State's Zach Harrison for this 10 spot. Both, I feel, are top 75 prospects. But White is an interesting case as he used to be a former tight end playing at Old Dominion, and he didn't make the transition to edge until 2019, I believe. And then he transferred to Georgia Tech, opted out of the 2020 season, had an ankle injury that cost him most of the 2021 season. So this year, we actually got to see what he can actually do in a power five uh conference and he did good he was quite productive this dude drastically changed his body through his collegiate career and he possesses a lot of power uh, a lot he has a lot of leverage that's kind of like the the thing to his game power and leverage and it's not like he didn't have production at old dominion in that 2019 season he actually faced good competition in the form of virginia tech's christian dari saw at the time if you're not familiar with him he's one of the better tackles in the nfl currently and he did a great job against dari saw and this dude's a really good athlete for his size play and again with a lot of power i love the bull rush move from him however he is still relatively new to the position and as you would expect, he doesn't exactly own a toolbox of pass rush moves. And while he does show nice burst, it's nice burst for a guy that's 286. However, still a big fan of White, and I can't wait to see this cat at the Senior Bowl. On to number nine, we got Felix and UDK Uzama out of Kansas State, 6'3", 255. I got him as a top 50 prospect. Yes, I really love this edge class, but this dude emerged in the 2021 season, making first team all Big 12, and then he remained dominant in 2022. He challenges with length, a powerful upper body, and he shows a good first step. He gets great leverage and he can walk blockers right into the laps of quarterbacks he he stacks and sheds very effectively he uh he has a good push pull move he could take on double teams with relative ease and i mean this is coming from the big 12 where you see a lot of three-man front so he's frequently having to deal with the occasional double team he reads and reacts well and he can run down screen plays before they even get past the line of scrimmage stout run defender as well just plays with his hair on fire and it's that he plays with his hair on fire great motor but he plays ahead of himself sometimes he plays a bit of out of control think bull in a china shop this guy ends up on the ground far too often than you would like to see and sometimes and really it's just like you see it in the run game as well like sometimes he's just so eager to uh rush the passer that uh, he ends up on the ground or he ends up overrunning run plays overall though very good prospect got him here at nine but in number eight i got andre carter from army you heard it from the army west point baby and he opted to join the army after high school didn't see much action his first two years and then hello 15 sacks in 2021 sets a single season record for army wasn't nearly as productive in 2022 and then he also mo also almost lost eligibility to even be in the draft because of a bill congress was going to pass that it won't allow him to defer his service that's all worked out though he will be eligible he will be at the senior bowl and you i could see why people love this cat like dude's got a nice combination of size length athleticism plays with a huge motor very high effort 
player. He moves that long body quickly, and he has length that allows him to engage and disengage exceptionally well. Never stops moving the feet through contact. And if you know me, you know I love guys that move and churn them feet through contact. It doesn't matter the position. It really doesn't. Now, he's still in the process of filling out that frame. As you can see, he's kind of lanky and... I would say he's still shown good progress over the years, but the theme is until this guy gets into an NFL weight room or until he plays on an NFL team and starts to understand like, uh, or starts to actually carve out a role in a scheme, he's this big question mark. He's a, he's a developmental guy for all intents and purposes. He's a project. Like often Army was asking him to play Y9 every play. And that's just not, you're not going to be able to stay on the field consistently doing just that. So he is a project. He is going to need to find more feathers in his cap, so to speak, so he can actually be a more productive player at the NFL. Again, still raw in terms of his approach and whatnot, but the potential it just oozes out just saying uh dude six seven two sixty five and you know what man like you look at that you look at that build man it's like i can't believe like he, he's long he's late and it's like i'm kind of confused i don't think his exp i don't think he's that explosive i and i think part of that is just like he's such a long and big player that you kind of take for ground for granted the amount of like space he actually can cover so i don't know man we'll get a better look at the senior bowl with him and then at number seven i got isaiah foski out of Notre dame six five two sixty another guy that got listed as a top 50 prospect we got a couple more on this list so hang with me but he uh, was really a rotation player early in his career. Played well as a starter in 2021. Decided to come back for 2022 and became the Fighting Irish's career leader at Sachs. Congratulations. Anyway, this guy's got a heap of potential. Uh, he showed solid improvement through 2020 to 2022. Plays with good juice. He has pretty good, darn good get off. He's got great length. A uh, very solid run defender. He even when attacking, he can literally move men back against their will, and he can do so violently. I like that. He does a very solid job setting uh, the setting the edge in the run. And however, like with some of the like some of the things I don't like about him because like all all intents and purposes this guy is a very high floor player but with his length he relies too much on length and upper body strength and he still needs to kind of refine his technique and become a bit more polished show a bit more pass rush moves but with that length there are times where he will pull guys back in to him and let blockers be able to get under his pads and get into his strike zone i just absolutely not like just don't like that about him there are also times where he's just kind of moved out of the play in the run game where he'll just kind of go with the flow or then rather than trying to be a not even necessarily a penetrator but a guy that disrupts the play instead of just kind of flowing along uh with the play it's kind of like uh in just flowing with the river instead of trying to fight the currents and be disruptive but man overall man i i love a lot about this cat's game he for me could be a fringe first rounder uh i really do like him in the back end of that first round area at number six i got nolan smith out of georgia former five-star recruit from the 2019 class being at georgia it's hard to carve out a starting role let alone a role in general as they love to rotate their guys in and out but he saw a career high in sat or in um snaps in 20 2021 and he was seeing even a larger role this season unfortunately against florida he tore his pectoral and might actually even miss his pro day which could cost him a lot of money but i can see why the people love this cat he is a wonderful athlete he flies off the edge he's got a great combination of length and explosiveness it's just a winning combo in the nfl the short area quicks are are pretty darn solid as well his uh, win rate increased this year it was up to 25 percent which it's like yeah anything over 20 percent you start to you start to get a feeling for like mm. I like that guy. I like a guy that can win like that. And this is the thing. Despite being undersized, 
he's an exceptionally good run defender, which I think could, like, I think a lot of people would be like, well, size be darn. Give me some of that Nolan Smith because he's that good of an athlete. They even used him a bit in coverage, dropping back in um, hook and curl zones. Now, th again, the size for me, it's actually a little bit more of a, huh, like, I, he's just lean. He needs to add play strength. How will that translate to the NFL level? Like we've seen guys be able to work through it like um, Hassan Reddick, but it took a team like the Cardinals like quite a while to figure out how to use him. He went from like like a middle linebacker, weak side. Like they moved him all over the place to try to figure out, okay, w what is this guy's role? And then they were like, you know what? Just have him fly off the edge. Just have at it, young sir. Have at it. And now it's it's a role that it's been very good for Reddick. Like you, you go to the Carolina Panthers, dominant with the Eagles this year, dominant. So it's like huh, there, there's a proven like track record. Like if you understand what you want him to be where he could be exceptionally good at doing that. So you, you see the path, you see the route you might want to take with Nolan Smith. And even maybe, even if the play strength doesn't get better, if he doesn't put on size, to see that there is success, if you know the role you want to play him in, if it's similar to Hassan uh, Red, Reddick, then yeah, get that guy. He's going to be disruptive. He's going to be a nuisance. He's going to be a menace. And then at number five, I got BJ Ojalari, former four-star recruit from the 2020 class. I think he's closer to 248 now, but still listed at 244, 63. This guy has been very good for LSU the last two seasons. He is the older or the uh, younger brother of Aziz Ojalari. If you were with me during, I think that was the 2021 draft. I absolutely loved Aziz, and you know what? I love me BJ pause anywho th this dude just has rare get off man off the edge you love the bend uh whether he's doing it from a two-point stance or a three-point stance with his hand in the dirt the combination of length and explosiveness is just very desirable he turns speed into power relatively easy plays with good leverage he's got a he's got a nice toolbox of pass rush moves a lot of good finesse moves a nasty spin move probably the nastiest in this class he plays to the uh to the whistle and and I, I just I love this dude in pursuit. He just doesn't quit. However, he is a bit undersized. Like I think an early comp for me with him is Yannick Nagakwe, which oh, that's been a very productive player at the NFL level. And I think that's what what Ojolari can be. Needs to get better as a run defender. And it's like, can I keep this guy on the field for three downs? I don't know if that's the case, at least early on, but maybe something he could work on and get better at. At, but I absolutely love Ojalari. Apparently, I love the whole family. Number four, I got Tyree Wilson out of Texas Tech. Three-star recruit out of the 2018 class. Put out a star performance in 2021. And he, he was on his way to having just as productive a year in 2022. Before suffering a uh, broken bone in his foot. And he decided, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get surgery on this so I can prepare for the NFL draft. So, hey, I get it, man. No qualms about that. But this, a lot of people really love this dude. It's easy to see why. He's got like, what, a seven foot wingspan? Dude's got a lot of length and he he moves exceptionally well for, for a guy his size at 275, 6'6". Six, six. He actually uh, easily gets inside leverage, shoots gaps well. His hands have a lot of pop to him. Really does. Like blocking him is like, it's tough because it feels like, when he when he's throwing out strikes it feels like probably you're getting hit by a, a beanbag gun like ouch that hurts i don't want that and that's kind of like what you're getting with him man he stays low despite being 6'6 six, six, gets good leverage has a very strong anchor that's going to be another thing with him that he's going to be very desirable as a run defender you know you can play him all three downs however i wouldn't say his like he's got fine burst like for his size i don't it's not elite you know people a lot of people are saying oh trevon walker ha ah, and he is not the athlete that trevon walker was uh though he does have better production than uh trevon walker did in his college career now some people are gonna be like oh his burst is terrible i don't think that's the case he, a lot of times he's laid off the snap he needs the time to snap better quite frankly i think that's the issue 
and there are times where he does play a bit out of control when he finds himself on the ground it's kind of few and far between but there are cases that on tape and this was my biggest sticking point at the beginning of the year when i went back and watched this tape i watched that liberty bowl game where it was like oh this was a star performance and i was like anytime he lined up across from charles cross he wasn't winning they literally had to scheme him away from charles cross for him to create pressure now i thought he was better at that this year against nfl competition but still is this a guy that's going to be capable of winning against top tier nfl talent i think that's still going to be a question we will see him at the senior bowl i can't wait he's going to be definitely an interesting prospect uh through this whole process and then number three is my boy jared verse six for 248 i think he's closer to 251 right now but formerly an unranked recruit out of the 2020 class went to albany redshirt his first year and then he just tore it up in 2021 ended up going to florida state looked amazing in the spring game this is actually what made me like oh this is definitely a guy to watch out and i was able to go back and look at some of the albany games against um like actual fbs talent like uh, i think it was syracuse and i was like and this was against uh, Matthew Bergeron or Bergeron, who is a highly regarded NFL prospect. And I was like, I think this guy could be legit. He tore it up at the spring game. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to project him as a top 50 prospect. And then he utterly humiliated LSU's offensive line. Put his name on the map. Now we're talking about this guy. Top 20, top 15, top 10 in some cases. Watch out. Jared Verse is legit. One of the best bull rushes in this class. His ability to turn speed into power is phenomenal. He's a great athlete. He's just so quick. And I, 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 I don't know laterally if he's going to be like amazing, but I know literally... Um, I think i used the right word i know in terms of straight line speed the dude's got it he really does he's got great full body strength you might look at that oh potentially sub 250 he must not be strong miss me with that this guy plays strong he really does he is he is just a ball of muscle oh my goodness however against maybe bigger tackles play strength might be a concern it might be but eh do i care about it no i don't care about it i freaking love this dude man he was, was just been a dominant force he was kind of limited with the after the louisville game because of a nagging ankle injury but then we kind of saw him re-emerge against florida and i was just like oh, jared versus back thank goodness what a year for jared verse we're not going to worry about the uh level of competition because guess what he came to the acc and was like yeah I'm your daddy. I freaking loved it. Uh, some people might be like, oh, he plays a bit off balance. I think it's just he, he plays with his hair on fire. And uh, I don't think it's a balance issue. Uh, I you can maybe make a case he plays out of control. I don't think that's necessarily the case. He just plays with a lot of effort, plays with a lot of grit. I've seen I've seen this guy's balance and it looks solid. So I don't think it, we're in a situation where like we're gonna see verse on the ground all the time. I don't think that's necessarily the case. But big fan of Jared Verse. On to number two, Miles Murphy. I was a huge fan of Miles Murphy going into the draft process. I loved him over my summer eval. And guess what? I still love him to this day. 6'5", 275, and he is just a physical specimen. This is the guy you need to be comparing to Trevon Walker. He's going to test out like it. He's got a very similar build. He's got the length. I love the get off. He can bend for a guy at his size, which you just love to see. And guess what? He he may he may not be the most polished pass like pass rusher in terms of tool like uh, toolbox. It's better than Trevon Walker. Guess what? The production, better than Trevon Walker. I, I'm just saying, man, that guy went first. We should be talking about Miles Murphy as a top five guy in all seriousness. Like, he 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 just imposes his will on, on blockers. He's just scary in that regard. Now, like, some of the qualms you're going to have with him is, yes, okay, he needs to be finer in terms of what he can do as a technician and he needs that he needs to 
polish on some of these pass rush moves because he's shown a lot of moves. It's just they're like, huh, that could have been cleaner, which is true. It's true. It just is. But sometimes, uh, and you'll see this mainly, I think sometimes in the run game or on extended plays, he gets so caught up in trying to like win these like boxing battles because he loves throwing throwing blows. Sometimes he gets so so into the rep that he doesn't see the play extend to the sideline and he doesn't make chase. Again, another case, few and far between. We're kind of nitpicking here, but you kind of have to do that with these top 10 prospects. I absolutely love Miles Murphy. Dude's surefire top 10 talent. Number one is Will Anderson, for the most part, this is going to be everybody's number one prospect, former four-star of the 2020 class, and he has been lighting it up since being a freshman. This guy is going to go top five, top four, top three. Let's be honest. This dude is super, stupid strong. You're going to look at that size, 6'4", 243, and be like, mm. so is strength a concern? It's not. This guy's play strength, amazing. He's sturdy. He knows how to play with power. Like He is relentless. He finds ways to the quarterback. Uh, I mean, shoot, he'll find, he'll find his way to anybody who has the football. His upper body strength is just ridiculous, man. He can manhandle guys that are much larger than him, so that's not a concern for me. Like his hands, he delivers these definite blows. And honestly, that's not even his best trait. His best trait is like this dude's speed, his burst, his bend. Like he is just a twitched up athlete. If we're going to nitpick, then yeah, okay. Maybe adding more bulk is ideal because he may be strong for his size, but when having to face much, much, much larger and much, much stronger blockers will that be the case and again we're kind of nitpicking um i don't think his kid off is necessarily elite but to be fair like he's a real grindy type of player as he just gets faster and stronger as the game where like goes on so it was kind of a weird case and i was actually we were watching this together me and uh, alex from hail mary sports and it was like man like, where is this guy? Like, I think it was Texas A&M game from 2021. I was like, where is this number one potential overall prospect, this blue chipper we were expecting? And, like, we get into the middle of the second quarter, and it was like he was he was undeniable. Like, you couldn't stop this guy. It was, it was ridiculous. I was like, where was that in the first quarter? Like, it was just weird. So I don't – maybe it's not necessarily a case of not elite get off, but – a guy that just gets better as the game goes on regardless this guy's top five he's wonderful but let me know what you think in the comment section below typically at the end of these videos i like to list some guys who were so close to making the list it just happens that this edge class is so good it's a lot of names i'd be talking about so just let's talk about it in the comment section below and uh as always until next time you be easy my friends later